So you're, you talked this year at OSCON on in, introducing SaaS. Um, so a lot of folks, I'm sure, who are working on the web today are familiar with SaaS, especially you know people who are using CSS already. But for those who aren't, what are the benefits of using SaaS? SaaS. So SaaS. SaaS is one of those acronyms that can mean so many different things, and I've. I think I've encountered all of them yep. talking to people here at OzCon. But in this case, we're talking about syntactically awesome style sheets. Mm -hmm. And so this is the concept of taking CSS and applying some programming structures to it to make it a bit more manageable when working in your web documents, which is such a fabulous idea. So it's got variables, it's got loops and for if if else kind of stuff going on. It's got uh, mix-ins and extends. So there's all kinds of little data structures, little functions and things that you can plug into your CSS to make it drier, don't repeat yourself, mm -hmm. and make it so much easier to manage when working in your web environment. And as I think the, the subtitle of the new video is, is making CSS fun again. My, my bratty little brother on Facebook posted, he said, did, did CSS ever stop being fun? And I said, no, it never stopped being fun. I <laughs> always enjoyed CSS, but SAS just takes it to a whole new level of fun. And it sounds like because it, it takes things like variables and if else and things that you're going to find in other parts of programming, yes. is it a good bridge, you would say? Because I, I know there's certainly a divide sometimes when it becomes comes to web design and web development. Yes. And sort of jumping from using HTML and CSS to JavaScript can sometimes be you know, a cliff, a so. Cavernous gap. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So yes, I work a lot with beginning beginners, people who are brand new to the field, who are just coming in and learning HTML and CSS for the first time. Mm -hmm. And people come in, they learn HTML fairly easily, they pick it up. CSS is a little bit more of a problem, but they get it eventually. And then, and then we just sort of dump them into JavaScript. And oh, by the way, here's this all this new algorithmic thinking, here's all this new way of thinking about uh, uh, these concepts of if and else and loops and variables and lots of different things. We throw them all at people at once. And by the way, here's a whole new set of syntax and a whole new way of thinking about things. What I love about SAS and the progression of teaching mm -hmm. is that SAS actually can help cover the ground between knowing HTML and CSS and jumping into JavaScript. Because now with SAS, we can start introducing students to these little bits of data structures. What's a variable? Mm -hmm. What's the concept of reusing code? Just write, writing a little bit of set of property value pairs that we can reuse again and again. Or the concept of passing an, an argument. Take an argument, pass it into some kind of function. Of course, we don't, we don't call it those things in SAS. We talk, call them mix-ins. Yeah. Or we call them functions that are already written for you. And so we gently introduce students now to these sorts of data structures. And when they hit JavaScript, they are so ready to learn mm -hmm. because they've already had this gentle introduction. They've written everything in the style of CSS. Now they're ready for the new syntax and the new ways of thinking. I see. So, you know, you're touching already on the fact that there's a lot of choice out there oh, on the front end. Ridiculous. Yes. So when you're teaching, um, you know, people who are beginning to work on the web, beginning to work in web design, yeah. um, getting into the front end, how do you, you know, help people make these kinds of critical decisions that become a key part of being a developer or designer is being able to vet and understand which things are going to really take off and which things are worth investing the time um, the time in. So yeah, how do you so very teach true. that? Yeah, that's it's actually quite a challenge, but it's really, I think, it boils down to critical thinking skills and the ability to look at something new, figuring out if it's yet another or if it's truly breaking new ground. And if it's breaking new ground in a good way, then perhaps, so for example, we'll take CSS preprocessors. That solves so many problems and so many critiques that I've heard about CSS over the years. And the fact that it could help bridge the learning from CSS into JavaScript, it just made it a really natural fit. Mm -hmm. That's definitely a technology that would take off. But uh, I, I think I had somebody tell me here at this conference that it's been 60 days since a new JavaScript framework was released, and there's a website that's actually tracking how often I these- I don't doubt that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> these new JavaScript libraries are really and so the trick is going to be 
which JavaScript library is going to win. I mean, we've got this whole thing going on on the front end right now. There's mm -hmm. so many different JavaScript libraries. This is actually the point where I just sort of sit back and watch what goes on in the field because there are so many different places are going to adopt and, and try different things. And eventually, the, the, it'll boil down to fewer and fewer. Mm -hmm. And that's the point where I really start to pay attention and start picking technologies for my students to learn. It's very, very difficult to pick a winner like with JavaScript frameworks mm -hmm. at this particular point in time. There's so many choices. Yeah, it's, very, it's a highly saturated field. It is, and there's so many big companies behind each of them. Mm -hmm. So you know who who's going to come out ahead? I don't. I don't know. Yeah. It sure will be interesting to find out though. So what projects or platforms are you most excited about right now working on the web, having worked on the web for a long time and you know, it, it evolving at such a breakneck speed, what kind of things are you most excited about working with? Well, I, I, I am excited actually about front end frameworks. Okay. And I know most people are just like, oh my gosh, you know, we can't customize, what do you mean? But front end frameworks have solved so many problems for front end web developers. Mm -hmm. They're being adopted en masse by major companies because for many years what we've done is we've built these custom front-end designs customized down to the last pixel the last div in our HTML and everything else it's this perfect solution and you can think of this as I've used the analogy of furniture before okay many of us have run out to IKEA and bought furniture before it's not the best furniture in the world but it's pretty straightforward it does the job it looks reasonable mm -hmm. and the price is right yeah okay we could also go out and we could hire an artisan to build us the custom, the most perfect, antique quality, heirloom quality furniture. And it would cost us an arm and a leg, mm -hmm. right? So uh, I, that's really where I see these front-end frameworks going. Front-end frameworks are going to be the IKEA of the front end. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The price is right. Yep. They're well documented. The parts are interchangeable. They're easily upgradable to the next version, or more easily upgradable to the next version. And the next developer that comes in can understand that code, as opposed to the wholly customized version that we have grown up with, so to speak, on the front end of the web, where the next developer comes in and says, your last developer was an idiot. They yeah. had no idea what they were doing. <laughs> Without exception, that's really the way that it works. We, I've never had anyone come in and say, wow, this is really great code. You had a yeah. really great front-end web developer. <laughs> it just never seems to happen. So um, uh, it, it's good for companies to have that centralized code that is going to be well-documented, maintained, yeah. and, and on the front-end. Mm -hmm. We saw that problem in the back end a long, longer ago mm -hmm. uh, with all the APIs and so forth. So that's what I'm watching for. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, always great to talk to you, Allie.